Hello, hello, hello. We are here, we are here, we are here. Gloria and Sylvia with another edition of Calm a Talk. And today, we're going to get very up close and personal with Marguerite. Some of you read about her recent surgery in her very moving blog. We hope you had seven days to read it because it was so long. About her experience with surgery and the Virgin Mary coming to her in the, in the operating room. It was very nice. Well, we're going to get under the skin of that story a little bit, sharing some things that uh, maybe Marguerite was a little reluctant to talk about that give a little bit more of the real story. Now, as some of you know, when she began this process because she had a cyst on her ovary and it got too big, finally she decided, all right, I think I'm going to get it taken out. Now, when she started talking to all of the gynecologists and surgeons, they said they practically wanted to give her a hysterectomy for this simple little cyst. She couldn't understand it. All right, so she had to talk them down to taking both ovaries and fallopian tubes to only one. And then she had to work on them about that. Okay, why do you need to take this out? And they were giving her all kinds of convoluted reasons. And she said, look, I just want the cyst taken off. That's it, period, end of story. You know, because uh, if, if you go in there and, and you, 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 you're taking these things out, it's like telling Marguerite, you know, you might as well, because she, her, her blood pressure is a little low, we don't want to cause any future problems with the heart. Why don't you take that out? And, uh, you know, anything else that you see might be a little off. Any of the organs at all, just take it out. No questions asked. That's fine. And uh, by the way, the pinky fingers are not really needed either. I don't want to get any injuries on my pinky fingers. So while you're, while you're doing the surgery, take them off too. All right, that's how she felt about it. That is how crazy this seemed to her. Now, one of the surgeons, you know, a chippy from medical school, all right, she actually asked Marguerite, well, why do you want to keep all these parts? What was Marguerite going to say? Well, because this is part of my holy womb chakra, the energetic meridians of the body. This woman, she started to say these things. The woman glazed over and she knew it was over right then. All right, that was not going to be the surgeon for her. She was able to find somebody very nice. But uh, the whole thing was crazy from the start. Now, she starts preparing for this process a month in advance. And uh, she finally gets to the hospital on the day of. She gets up to the waiting room. And, uh, you know, she's trying to remain calm. She has been listening to this guided meditation every day, sometimes two times a day, to get her get herself to calm down about this whole situation. All right. She's got 50 million people that are sitting vigil for her to protect her. So she's, you know, feeling all right. And what happens? She gets to the desk with the lady up there. And all of a sudden, over the loudspeakers in the hospital, they say, we are now going to do a test of the emergency broadcast system. So they start in with this screeching sound and these blinking lights in the corners of the rooms and the disembodied sounds of the, the, the artificial intelligence voice saying, code red, hospital emergency, code red, first floor. And, you know, so Marguerite, She's trying to remain calm, and she, she's on to this because she knows that this code red thing and this test of the emergency broadcast system that she saw as a child on TV is total mind control. It's totally designed to get everybody hysterical for no reason whatsoever. And uh, she's sitting there, all right, hello, I see you aliens, but you're not going to yank my chain. All right, that's it. They continued on with this code red thing while she was in in the pre-op, while she was getting wheeled into the operating room. It was, it was unbelievable. Now, she goes in to change her clothes, 
and uh, they give her a bag. They say, put all your clothes and your possessions in here. The bag was like, uh, you know, a Ziploc baggie. How is the woman going to fit her boots, her clothes, her pocketbook in there? The pocketbook is three times the bag, all right? So first of all, hospitals need to know. Look, when you're undressing a woman, you got to give them a big bag. They might have a lot of stuff in there. The, 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 that, that bag was for a man who has, you know, a pair of cordovans, a T-shirt, and uh, a pair of pants. That's it. So secondly, then they give her the gown, all right, the gown. Now, contrary to popular opinion, one size does not fit all. This gown was so enormous. It, 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 one size fits all only fits the largest person on the planet, all right? That is who it's designed for. Not Marguerite, who is in competition with Scarlett O'Hara, for the smallest waistline in three counties. Okay, she puts this thing on. She's swimming in it. It's falling off. And on top of it all, the color. All right, what is that color? It is kind of like a pukey blue. Who designed it? Whose skin does that color go with? All right, you're already upset and disturbed, especially as a woman, knowing that you're going into the operating room and your skin is going to be reflected with this terrible color that does not go with you. It's already making you more and more unattractive. And as it is, you can't have any makeup when you go in there, nothing. So we're saying, look, hospitals, start getting used to having different colors. You know, let the person choose. Do you want red? Do you want yellow? Do you want dark blue? Do you want teal? Something like that. It's part of wellness. And we're going to suggest that we have the Gloria and Sylvia logo on the hospital gowns. We think that would be a very nice idea because it gets people to lighten up and start laughing right away. All right, so we're going to put in a suggestion to the suggestion box in the hospital as soon as we can. All right, now, so she gets into the pre-op uh, place and they're putting all the IVs in and, and everything. And it's at this point that they give her the permission forms. Now, these permission forms tell you they notify you when you, you're, you're, you're already there lying down with uh, needles in your arm and everything about what could happen in the surgery. They inform you, you could die, you could become maimed and blind, you could become a vegetable. What are you going to do at that point? You're already started. Are you going to say, oh my God, this sounds terrible. I've changed my mind. Take these IVs out. I'm going home. Give me that Ziploc bag back. I'm, I'm putting my clothes back on. No, you're not going to say that. Now, luckily, Marguerite was tipped off by a family member beforehand to get this document from the surgeon, which she did. So she was prepared. She didn't even look at it to remind herself of the terrible things that could happen. She just signs her life away. And that was it. Now, next, these staff members are suspiciously telling her all about Italy, how they're going to Italy, this, they're interested in Italy, oh, we notice you're Italian, we're so interested in that. And uh, the one guy, three times he starts bursting into Andrea Bocelli songs. Now, Marguerite, She's lying there. She's saying, my God, I'm trying to be traumatized over here. What are you people doing? You're distracting me. I, I, I want to bop you in the head. Finally, she gets the message. Oh, my God, my grandma's here. My grandma's here because for her, the Holy Trinity was Jesus, Pavarotti, and Bocelli. Now, this guy's singing Bocelli. And Grandma, she was so proud of her, 
her Italian heritage. Every time somebody would come over, Marguerite, she would have the, the photographs of the entire family line on the table. She would go through who was who, going back three generations. Nobody could remember the story, so she would tell them again and again every time somebody came over. All right, so her grandmother was there. She was so happy about that. Now, the next thing was she was, she, she was a little concerned about nausea. So she said, you know, could you give me something? So uh, they tell her that they're going to put the scopolamine patch behind Saria. She says to herself, scopolamine, that sounds, that sounds familiar. That sounds familiar. I think I heard David Wilcock and Corey Good talk about scopolamine. Sure enough, after the operation, she goes home. They call it devil's breath. It's a drug from Colombia that's used to mind control people, take away the total free will, etc., etc. But she lies there and she says, you know, she says to herself, you know, you could mind control me from here to Mars. I don't care as long as I don't throw up. Put it on. All right. So they slap on the the scopolamine patch and that's it. Now, um, when she comes out of the operation, she doesn't even know that the operation happened, and uh, she's in that beatific state, the Virgin Mary is coming to her, because why? She finds out that they gave her ketamine, all right? They might as well have given her LSD. She's an oracle, all right? She's going into these altered states. And, uh, you know, for her, it was actually very nice because uh, she could have an operation and be an oracle at the same time. And for her, that is a very efficient use of time. So she was happy about that. Now, then they give her the drugs to go home with oxycodone. All right, the, the, the opiate. Now she's thinking, my God, I could become a drug addict. Oh, my God. Either that or I could uh, save it up and sell it on the black market. But she decided not to do that. She decided to just give it back to the hospital at the end. She just put it in their little box there and, and it was done. So that is some of the inside scoop of the story of Marguerite's surgery. The details that not everybody knows about. Now, after several weeks, it's all over. Everything's healing. She's starting to do yoga. She's starting to dance. And she's starting to sing. And everything's happy again. So we are extremely happy for Marguerite. And uh, we just wanted you to know some of the other aspects of what happened so that you could have the total story once you read her blog and once you hear what we have to say. All right? So, this has been Gloria and Sylvia with another edition of Karma Talk. And you know what we say. Keep laughing. Bye-bye.